I'm sure you'll go through a bunch of tough decisions and thoughts and you, things you'll have to go through. People might see what I'm about to ask as an Eklund or a Bordelow question. It's not, I promise you. But as you evaluate any AHL player in your organization, how do you know when is the right time to bring them up and give them an opportunity? Well, uh, I think for me and, and for our staff is that, one, they're, they're doing what we've asked them to do, the things that we've asked them to improve on and to work on. And then secondly, are they kind of doing those things, but are they also dominating? I think when you watch enough AHL games, um, you can kind of start to see the players and, and say that they don't, they don't belong in this league anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's, those are kind of the two things that we're looking for is them improving on the things that we've asked them to improve on and then watching and say this guy's in the wrong league and ready for the next step. Is it okay for players that get brought up if they're not ready to go back and then return when maybe they are ready? You try and make it so that you don't have to do that, or is that an, is that an okay part of the process? Yeah, it's definitely okay. I think in an ideal world, you want to make sure the players, when they come up, they're ready and they're almost overripe and that you don't have to right. send them back down. But right. development, everyone's development path is different. Um, so, you know, some guys might come up and hit the ground running and others might come up and stumble a little bit and lose their confidence and they need to go down and kind of reshape their game and, and build their confidence back up and then come back up later in the year. So everything's not the same. Every player is not the same. But so it, it's definitely okay if they come up and, you know, they, they're not quite ready and they need to go back down. With the Sharks team that you take over, obviously there are some returning players under contract. There's also new players that are free agents you signed. Uh, there's also the pipeline. As we kind of just look at that third group, the, the pipeline in the future, what priority and how, how much importance do they have over shaping your next three to five years here? Oh, they're, they're usually important. I think the way you watch the league now, especially in the flat, flat cap, you need to draft well, then you need to develop well. And those young players that are in the pipeline, they're, they're essential to, to winning. Basically, you're going to have your teams that are your part of your team that is kind of well paid and making a big chunk of the cap so to be successful you're going to need your young players to young kind of cheap players to to be successful and be good players and be a part of the core so you know we're we got high hopes for a lot of those guys it's also a group that seems to be a, a little bit more established in in years in the nhl a little bit more of a veteran group that you've tried to at least start this season with is there a goal in mind that you want to make this roster tough to crack yeah, I think, you know, just looking at the roster and looking at the games last year, I think the last thing you want to do is put your, your rookies and your young players and prospects in a position where they have to play in right. the, at the NHL level and they have to develop at the NHL level. I think for us it's important that those guys come up when they're ready and they earn their spots on the team. We don't want to be in the position where we say, well, we don't really have anyone here, so let's bring someone up and just stick them in the lineup. We want those guys to earn their way up and and force, force their way up in the lineup. And I think, you know, we were able to do that as with some of the guys that we brought in over the summer.